solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. For the union makes us strong. Free KCT President Yang Kyung Soo. Victory to the workers of Korea. This is Steve Zeltzer. I'm with the United Front Committee for Labor Party and Work Week. We're having a solidarity rally uh, for the Korean general strike, which we support today taking place in Korea, led by the KCTU. We support their demands, equality for all, against, uh, temporary work, uh, against repression, and uh, for democratic rights for workers that uh, they are fighting for. And we believe that workers around the world, there's an action in Milan today, there's an action in Tokyo, and we believe that workers Workers in the United States should support and do support their struggle because the struggles in Korea are the same struggles we face in the United States with temporary workers, with gig workers, Uber and Lyft. Millions of workers are have no stability and live from check to check <coughs> and have very difficulty surviving. So we're here today saying free the president of the KCTU, Yang Kyung Soo. And also we need similar action in the United States. There's a major labor upsurge in the United States of over 100,000 workers on strike. These workers need to join together in, in the United States and around the world. They're fighting for the same things. We need united action by the American working class. That is what will be victory to the Korean working class. Also, we support a labor party. The Democrats and Republicans are corporate parties. They support imperialism. They support the military occupation bases in Korea. We have no interest in supporting trillions of dollars for more military. What we need is to put that money for human services, health care, here and against this COVID pandemic, which is killing over 700,000 people in the United States. This is an outrage and it's a crime. And also the Korean workers, the healthcare workers are, are fighting to protect themselves from COVID as well. So our first speaker is going to be Charles Minster. He's a retired laborer. Welcome, Charles. You know, it's interesting that uh, the reason that uh, they, arrested, they arrested the uh, president of the KCTU was because they claim he violated the, the COVID-19 restrictions that have been imposed in, in South Korea. Now, they have quite a, uh, an excellent health care system there that uh, has given the opportunity for everybody to get vaccinated. And they've had protocols in place for uh, a couple of years. Uh, they're using this against the trade union movement strictly to stifle any dissent. Because there's a lot of reason for dissent in the Korean, uh, amongst the Korean workers and all of Korean people. Uh, you know, I have some uh, statistics here about the debt of Korea. Now, the government debt right now stands at $728 billion dollars, approximately a billion dollars, 728 billion. The private debt is one and two thirds greater than the government debt and stands at 1.55 trillion. So you all have been watching the squid, the squids game uh, on TV and that's the reason it's so popular in Korea and all around the world because personal debt is skyrocketed and especially in Korea. Uh, the U.S. government debt at the day is about 28.9 trillion and growing. Uh, individual debt is 15 trillion, which works out to about 92,700 per individual in this country. So the debt in the capitalist world is astronomical. So the bankers hold the governments in thrall. Sooner or, sooner or later, the bubble's going to burst. And we need the collective energy and, and ability of the trade unions to form political parties that will fight for the interest of the working people and the rest of the masses. Because the rest of the masses are dissatisfied to the point where they're backing, in this country, backing Trump. So that's how backward it, all over the country these right-wing uh, dictators have been getting power because everybody's dissatisfied with the capitalist system. But the working class can put it in a perspective that, that can coalesce and bring together all the masses that are oppressed in this country and around the world. So that's the job of, of us and of the KCTU. Independent political action with a, with a fighting workers party that will struggle for a workers government. Thank you. I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night alive as you or me. Says I, but Joe, you're ten years dead. 
I never died, said he. I never died, said he. The copper bosses killed you, Joe. They shot you, Joe, said I. Takes more than guns to kill a man, says Joe. I didn't die, says Joe. I didn't die. And standing there, as big as life, and smiling with his eyes, says Joe. From San Diego up to Maine In every mine and mill Where working men defend their rights It's there you'll find Joe Hill It's there you'll find Joe Hill I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night Alive as you or me Says I, but Joe, you're ten years dead I never died, said he I never died, said he because of the repression of the uh, garment workers, which he was trying to organize. And workers in this country who organize are fired. 10 to 12,000 workers are fired every year at Amazon, uh, Bessemer. Workers are fired by these uh, corporate billionaires who really run the government and are destroying our country, destroying the world. These Amazon and Bezos and these capitalists are going to the moon and Mars while people are starving in this country. That shows the priority of the United States. Our next uh, speaker is Angela Bibmerit. She is is a postal worker and we're fighting against privatization. The privatization of the postal system in Korea actually was led by the United States, the IMF and the World Bank. Uh, during the crisis in Korea, the economic crisis, they demanded that Korea privatize their postal system, privatize their natural resources. These looters, and that's what they really are, are using the economic crisis to steal. And that's why the billionaires have grown even more wealthy uh, during this economic crisis, during the pandemic. While people are dying, they're making more billions and billions. So so welcome, Angela. Oh, I'd just like to say that we have a number of workers that are working longer hours. Part of the reason because they don't have unionized jobs to try to fight for decent wages, health care, dental care, retirement plans. You know how many workers I see that are in their 70s and they don't know when they're going to retire? There's no retirement plans. There's no pension plans. They, they're not going to be able to, surprise, be able to survive on their small Social Security checks. We need more unionized jobs to guarantee fair wages, health care, dental benefits, retirement benefits. Who wants to be 70 years old and don't even know when you're going to be able to retire? Who wants to go to retirement and in your 70s you got to go back and get another full-time job? Who wants to do all that? Hey, if, you, if these jobs gave a decent pension, you can step aside in your 60s, maybe even your late 50s, let somebody else get the job, and you do other things, like show up for this and protest how workers are being treated. Thank you, Sister Angela, because this is an international struggle. Our rally here, our speak out for the Korean workers is connected to the workers in this country, right here in San Francisco. San Francisco is one of the richest cities in the world, and thousands of people are homeless in San Francisco. People are dying, public workers are dying because they don't have PPE in San Francisco. A large number of these are black and brown workers who are punished because of their nationality, their race, right here in San Francisco. So the attack on working people, the 
attack on brown and, black and brown people. The racist system that we have is wrecking this country, is wrecking San Francisco, is wrecking the world. So we're in solidarity with the working people in Korea. We, ha we want them to have a victory. We want the freedom of, of their trade union leader from the KCTU. We want an end to the inequality which is growing under COVID, is growing under capitalism. It's insufferable for people to be, not to get PPE, not to be able to retire uh, when they're 50. This is a rich world, but all the money is going to the top. That's what's happening in capitalism now around the world. So our next speaker is Ricardo Ortiz. He's a labor researcher and an internationalist supporting the people of Korea, the workers in Korea. We're right here in solidarity with the KCTU president, jailed by the neocolonial uh, laptop regime of the United States imperialists and the Japanese imperialist government. The government of uh, South Korea is a repressive government and it was installed and created by the United States and the other imperialist powers after the end of World War II. And uh, it has been used as a base of aggression toward people, you know, other peoples in, uh, uh, throughout Asia. During the Vietnam War, the South Korean puppet regime sent two divisions of the South Korean Army to Vietnam and a Marine Brigade to uh, help the United States Imperialists in their efforts to uh, attempt to crush a peasant-led revolution that ultimately defeated the United States Imperialists. So, not only the South Korean regime has done these uh, uh, collaborations with the United States and the other imperialist capitalist uh, powers, the regime is so oppressive that has jailed opponents or, chasing, or have chased people out of the country. Many years ago, uh, the man that uh, is considered to be the founder of the modern uh, art of uh, of uh, uh, the modern art of martial arts, Taekwondo, General Che, because he favored the unification of the two Koreas, the South Korean government chased this guy out of the country and he established himself with a residence in Canada and he denounced that the South Korean regime attempted to kill him right there in Canada. Thus, how repressive and intolerant this crap-pot capitalist neocolonial regime is. So we, the workers of the world, have to give solidarity to every oppressed nationality, every oppressed group, every and all the working class together in the work and top of this miserable system called capitalism. We are living in the age of, you know, agony of capitalism. More than ever, the capitalist class is uh, trying to uh, attack the working class internationally to get more profits, to reduce us to uh, servility. But we got to oppose that. And we cannot allow the capitalists of the world to do that to us. Never, never, ever. So that's what, you know, we need not only in South Korea, we need right here in the United States a revolutionary workers' party, an independent workers' party that will crush the graveyard of all social movements and the working class, the, more, the oldest capitalist party in the world, which is the Democratic Party. That's the oldest capitalist party in the world and has co-opted the labor movement, has co-opted everything. We got to get rid, we got to break with from the Democrats. The Democrats are nothing, it's, you know, uh, but uh, uh, sunscreen for the capitalist class is uh, their vehicle, you know. All the, you know, in, 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 right in the 20th century, both world wars were led by Democratic Party uh, politicians, Roosevelt and uh, Woodrow Wilson. During the Vietnam War, the core of the war was led by none other 
that LBJ, that crap uh, racist from Texas. So, you know, uh, during the Obama presidency, he launched more uh, drone attacks on the Afghani people than any of the predecessors. And now, sleepy Joe Biden has deported more immigrants in his first uh, year than Trump did in his first year. That's how the Democratic Party is, because it's a party of the capitalist class. The social democrats, the liberals, the fascists, they are enemies of the working class. And only through a scientific socialist independent workers party, we can really bring freedom to the workers of the world. Rise up for victory. Free the KCTU president, Yang Kim So now. So our next speaker is Charles Rockless. Welcome, Charles. Thank you, sisters, brothers, and friends, comrades. I'm Charles Rackless, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Communist Workers Group and the International uh, Leninist Trotskyist Tendency. To support the Korean workers in their struggle in the, in the USA, the CWG demands bring the US troops home now and close all foreign bases. South Korea and the US are technically still held in a state of war with the DPRK. The war footing and the cost of maintaining US imperialism's foothold in the peninsula are still a burden on the workers of the region, the taxpayers in the United States, and threaten humanity as a likely center of World War III. This unending war created the conditions of the massive profiteering by the capitalists and massive indebtedness of the working class in Korea. We call on the trade union movement in the United States to strike and heart cargo, war supplies and armaments directed towards the region. We call on the, for, on the U.S. forces to organize rank and file come home now movements. We demand the U.S. to close the 800 plus foreign military bases. This is how the U.S. labor movement must support the Korean workers north and south. Today, the Chinese Stalinist capitalists compete with the U.S. and South Korea over which power center will restore capitalism in the DPRK and subordinate it as a semi-colony. We oppose the imperialism both of China and of the United States. It is in the interest of the working class of the two Koreas, the region and internationally, to unite and build a revolutionary workers international to lead the political revolution against the bureaucracy in the DPRK and a social revolution against the capitalist class in South Korea to defeat imperialism and unite the reunite the Korean people in a socialist Korea. <clears throat> We're here to support and build solidarity with the workers of Korea who are on a one-day strike and building for mass mobilizations in January, called for by the Korean Confederation of Trade Unions. We note the Korean government has threatened to shut down the mass rallies planned for today and has mobilized all the forces of the capitalist media and the class collaborationist union bureaucrats to oppose, isolate, and limit the walkouts and demonstrations. The government continues to use the excuse of COVID to crack down on the trade union mobilization strikes and actions. While, while they, <clears throat> the, the, the big conglomerates impose austerities and degrade the workers' conditions. Despite being Asia's fourth largest economy, Korea is in an economic crisis. As spoken about earlier, the household debt is 100% of the GDP and the national debt uh, to GDP ratio is 50% and expected to rise to 60.7% by 2026. Trade union leaders are regularly arrested and jailed as their memberships expect them to take action and lead class struggles against the, the big conglomerates, the Chabols. We demand the release of Yang Kyun Su, the president of the KCTU and other union leaders and members arrested and detained for conducting mass rallies of workers. 
The prosecutors claim that they were super spreader events, but, uh, but they did maintain social distancing guidelines. And the, of 8,000 who attended outside, uh, only three tested positive with no evidence of contagion to the event. We demand the dropping of the charges against the previous KCTU president, Kim Young Hwan, arrested for scuffling with the riot police at the National Assembly when a bill extending working hours was on the floor. Workers demand an end to the dismissals and the firings due to the pandemic and demand direct cash payouts for workers and small businesses. The current president, Moon Jae-in, built a popular front tripartite government with the participation of the KCTU. Following the arrest of Kim Young Hwan, the KCTU withdrew from the tripartite commission. And this is the second time the KCTU has entered and exited a popular front with the self-proclaimed labor-friendly capitalist governments. The lesson is labor cannot win by entering and participating in the boss's governments. If labor intends to win its current demands, the KCTU and other labor federations need to build an independent workers' party which fights for a workers' government that demands workers put, put forward are important not only for the Korean workers, but also for workers internationally. In the United States and everywhere, workers face the current capitalist offensive, driven by the desperate attempt to put the cost of the declining rate of profits on the backs of workers, small farmers, and small businesses. The KCTU demands has 15 demands and, and they're reduced to three sections. One, abolish irregular work, part-time, temporary, or contract work that has little or no pay benefits and extend labor protections to all workers. They demand give workers power in the economic restructuring decisions during the times of crisis. And they demand nationalized key industries and the socialized basis of services like education and housing. Around the world, workers face irregular work, and, the new, and this is the new normal. Of, uh, we have to take up the fight against casualization internationally. Strikes against casualization, such as those in Korea today and in Italy last week, demonstrate that our fight is international. Indeed, the rise of irregular work, such as Uber, Lyft, and the turning of college professors into adjuncts and temporaries, has degraded the wages and benefit packages. The bosses are willing to pay and the workers are fed up. Workers are withholding their labor, telling the bosses to take this job and shove it in unprecedented numbers. Workers are responding with a decades overdue and unexpected October Labor Fest, a strike wave from coast to coast in many sectors, seeing workers vote down inadequate and concessionary tentative agreements. The class collaborationist Democratic Party hacks leading the majority of the U.S. trade unions are desperately trying to put the cork back in the bottle while they walk that razor's edge responding to the anger and militancy of the rank and file while keeping their promises to the bosses and the Democrats that they can deliver the rank and file in a labor management team collaboration. Because capitalism is in its terminal crisis and because any reforms and concessions won in the short term will be counterbalanced by the capitalists imposing alternate austerities, financial maneuvers, and takeaways, the working class needs to chart an independent course. To win, we need a workers' party, a labor party that organizes class struggle leadership in the unions to break from the capitalist parties and refuse to form class collaborationist tripartite regimes and commissions which trap labor into imposing the austerities. We need a labor party which fights for a class exclusive workers government that carries out a workers transitional program to provide jobs for all with livable prevailing wages based on shortening the work week, 25 hours work for 40 hours pay, guaranteed wages and benefit, vacation, sick 
sick days, pensions for all, provide free and universal quality health care, housing and education, defend immigrant workers' rights to seek refuge, citizenship rights, and labor freely without fear of harassment and deportation, restore the environment suffering under the current climate catastrophe, achieve zero COVID and end the pandemics and address famine and medical crisis by abolishing intellectual property rights and sharing medical technology internationally as needed. To win the most basic economic necessities, workers will need their workers' government to nationalize the commanding heights of the economy without indemnification of the big shareholders and run the economy under workers' self-management, workers' democracy, and a central plan. Such advances will be needed to be forced and defended by a workers' militia. The CWG supports the call of the United Front Committee for a Labor Party for the trade union movement to break with the Democrats and build a mass workers' party. The CWG and international Leninist Trotskyist tendency advocate for a revolutionary vanguard party and a new international based on the method of the 1938 transitional program. Thank you, comrades. Okay, thank you, Charles. And this struggle, as Charles said, is international. Today in South Africa, uh, there's a struggle of 200,000 metal workers of NUMSA who are fighting for a living wage. Their wa real wages has gone down while the capitalists in South Africa have made billions off their labor. They want to go back to contract labor in South Africa. Many of the pr uh, properties like the uh, railway system have been privatized and the trade union bureaucrats in South Africa have become stockholders. In fact, the president of uh, the South Africa, Ramaphosa, Cyril Ramaphosa, is actually a former leader of the iron worker who has become a capitalist and now is instituting privatization and union busting. So we stand with the workers of South Africa. In, in Namibia, uh, there is a struggle of the Namibian miners, uh, the Rossing Mine, Mine Workers Union of Namibia. Uh, they were fighting to protect their health care uh, rights and wages and the the company that took over that uh, mine, Chinese National Nuclear Corporation, CNNC, is a state-owned Chinese company. They took over that mine promising that they would abide by the contract, the national labor laws. They tried to bribe the union leadership of, of that mine, uh, and they refused, the workers refused to do that. They fired the entire leadership, union leadership of that mine, and they've been fighting to get their jobs back. So on the 27th of this month, uh, at the Chinese consulate in San Francisco at 4 p.m. Uh, there's going to be a rally for the Namibian miners demanding they be rehired. They've also attacked their lawyer, Hewat Bukes. They shut off his electricity and water. This is the government of Namibia, which has really been controlled now by Chinese and other capitalist companies. They're destroying the judicial system. And in this country, as we know, the judicial system is rigged. Sister Bibb has been fired because of her work of defending workers and had to go through a long process to get her job back. But a lot of workers are fired in this country. They go to get justice and they get screwed, basically, by the courts, which are controlled by the capitalists. I mean, what we're saying is the real criminals in this country are not the two million people who are in jail. It's the billionaires who run this country, Bezos and the other billionaires, uh, Elon Musk, who violated the labor laws at the Tesla plant, who ignored uh, uh, the safety laws of California. There are less than 200 inspectors. Morgan Stanley, Chase. Morgan Stanley, Chase. These bankers are looting the world and they are the ones running the U.S. government. They are the ones ru running the government in Korea, in South Africa, in England, in Italy, and and they're trying to destroy working people. So we're here today standing up not only for the Korean workers, the KCTU, which is having a general strike, but workers around the world. And we believe that a major political imped impediment to fighting and to uniting all workers is the Democratic Party. The unions here support, give millions of dollars to Gavin Newsom and the Democrats. What do they get? What do these unions get by giving millions of dollars to the Democrats? They get kicked in the face. In California, it's controlled by a supermajority, the legislature. And what are they doing? Have they provided health care for all in California? Hell no. In fact, they've outsourced the vaccines to private companies, uh, Blue Cross, uh, which makes money by vaccines. So we're saying we need the workers in this country, in San Francisco, the workers and stationary engineers, operating engineers who are on strike at Kaiser Hospital, who've been on strike for weeks. And this Kaiser Hospital chain, which calls itself a nonprofit, made $3 billion in profit in the second quarter of, of the uh, 
of this uh, of this uh, year. So they're making billions of profits and they're attacking the workers who are asking for decent wage conditions. The same at the post office. These companies, these businesses are making massive amounts of profits. The workers are paying the cost. So what we're saying today, solidarity with the Korean workers. Victory to the workers of Korea.